Welcome here, oh dear friend. We are so glad that you have come. Here we all love you, and the Lord loves you most. The St. Lucia Methodist Church welcome all of you joining us for worship today, and pray that this worship experience will be a blessing to us all. Congratulations to all those celebrating a birthday, anniversary, or any other special occasion. May the abundance of love fill all the days of your life. God bless you. It's your It's the day that you were born. It's the day your mama brought you home. It's a special day. Let us celebrate. If you are going through a difficult period, grieving the loss of a loved one, we offer our sincere condolences to you and pray that God's peace surround and support you during this time. We give God thanks for all those taking part in our worship experience this morning and pray God's continued blessings upon you in ministry. Our preacher for today is Reverend Tiniku Smith. We thank God for him and his wife, and we await the word that he will bring us this morning. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let's prepare ourselves to worship God this morning. Special greeting is extended to those who are joining us online. Welcome and blessings in the name of Jesus. Are you stuck in the past? Have you lost hope for the future? Do not despair. Build houses of joy. Plant gardens of faith. Offer thanks and praise to the living God. All will be well. For a call to worship, please respond appropriately. Sing God's praises. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. We have walked through fire and water with heavy burdens on our backs. But God has led us into a spacious place to plant gardens of faith. Rejoice in the Lord. Build houses of joy and shout glory to our God. Let us worship in gratitude and praise. For our opening prayer. Gracious and merciful God, you revive us when our bodies grow weak and when our spirits faint within us. Though we may be bound by our worries, your word is not chained. Help us build houses of joy and plant gardens of faith as we pray for the welfare of our communities. Help us bloom where we are planted that your harvest of hope and love may be bountiful. In gratitude for your blessings, we pray. Amen. Let's praise God this morning in singing our opening hymn, number 30 in the VIP, Praise ye the Lord, tis good to raise.
invite us to come to God in prayer, a prayer of adoration, confession, and thanksgiving. Let us pray. O God, our Father, the heavens speak clearly of your incomprehensible glory, and their expanse declares repeatedly the work of your hand. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night re reveals knowledge of you, our awesome creator. We acknowledge you as uh, the creator God who has brought forth order, harmony, and goodness in the midst of a chaotic world in the midst of a formless and void and darkness, you have brought about peace and rest in the midst of all. We pray that your transformative power will transform our lives individually and collectively as a community as we acknowledge you and your power and your might and your love that has never changed, that has continued to remain a constant in our life. We are in awe of your incomprehensible power, and yet even more wonderful to us than your glorious creation is the redemption of yourself in scripture your law, testimony, precepts, commandments, and judgment, all of which are perfect, sure, right, pure, and clean, and true. Your words convert the soul and makes us wise. Bring us joy, it enlightens us, and produce righteousness in us. We therefore desire your word more than gold finding it sweeter than honey. Precious Heavenly Father, all our delight is in you as we worship you this morning. The deepest longing of our hearts is to see and to celebrate your glory. We will not be truly satisfied until we behold your face in righteousness. Indeed, may honor and glory be yours and yours alone this morning. In this we confess our sinfulness, the slowness of our learning from your word and Christ, the slowness of our humility to humble ourselves to the direction of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us, cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Give us uh, O oh God, the strength, give us the humility, give us the purpose and renew within us a clean heart that we may know your ways and be directed to the path of righteousness. We have seen in words, in deeds, and in thoughts. We have seen in how we relate to people. Forgive us, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. As people of faith, we have failed in so many ways that are known intentionally and also at times unintentionally. But we are thankful to Jesus Christ, the redeeming work that sustains us, that redeems us, that guides us to the path of your righteousness. We cling and trust not in any good of our own, but only in the goodness of Christ. For that, we receive your mercy, we receive your pardon, we receive the good news that is ours in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, for your, forgiving, your forgiveness. Thank you, God, for life. Thank you, God, for the privilege to join brothers and sisters in Christ in our community of faith 
the St. Lucia circuit and also throughout the Caribbean and the world as we join together in this platform. We thank you for those uh, who are talented uh, with the skills and the knowledge that enables us to use this platform. We thank you for your, their families. We thank you, oh God, for the gospel that is given and afforded to us, uh, that is manifested in Christ Jesus, his death, his life, and his resurrection, and we await his second coming. We thank you for the advocate, your Holy Spirit, that continues to intercede, that guides us into all truth, and who is with us, witnessing to our soul, to our spirit, that we are sons and daughters of the living God. This is the prayer of adoration, of confession and thanksgiving, offered in faith, offered in humility, offered with a grateful heart, offered in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for the ministry of the word, we will sing the hymn number 207 in the VIP, Standing on the Promises of Christ, My King. up within your church, but the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. 
The Old Testament reading is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29. We'll read from verse 1 to verse 7. The Old Testament reading, Jeremiah, Jeremiah letters to the exile in Babylon. There, these are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priest, and to the prophet, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile. from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Je Jacob and the queen mother, the court officials, the leaders of Judah and, Jer and Jerusalem, the artisan and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of El Elisha, son of Japan and Je Jeremiah, son of Hela, whom King Zedekiah of Judea sent to Babylon to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It is said, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into the exiles from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses, and live in them, build gardens, and eat what they produce. Their wives, take wives and their sons and daughters in marriage, and they, be, and they may bear children, sons and daughters. Multiply them, and do not disgrace, and do not decrease but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you to, into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. This is the word of the Lord. hymn of uh, preparation, hymn 206, Spirit of Faith Come Down. Spirit of Faith Come Down, review the things of God, and make to us the Godhead know and witness with the blood. Tis thine the blood to apply and give us eyes to see who did for every sinner die hath surely died for me. No one can truly say that Jesus is the Lord Unless thou take the veil away And breathe a living word Then only then we fear Our interest in his blood And cry with joy unspeakable Thou art my Lord, my God Oh, that the world might know the all-atoning Lamb. Spirit of faith, descend and show the virtue of His name. The grace which all may find, the saving power in part, and testify to humankind and speak in every heart. Inspire the living faith which whosoe'er receive the witness in them 
themselves they have unconsciously believed a faith that conquers all and doth the mountain move and saves whoever on Jesus call and perfects them The Gospel reading comes to us today from the book of St. Luke, chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. It reads, On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him keeping their distance. They called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to him? Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to Christ, our Lord. I invite us to come to God in prayer as we prepare our hearts to receive the proclaimed word. Let us pray. God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you who command forth your word, and your spirit to convict and bring forth life. We pray in thanksgiving as you make available revelation of who you are in light of your word. May that revelation resonate in our lives individually and as a community. May it bring forth life and life everlasting. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Today, I invite us to reflect on the theme, A Grateful Heart Will See God's Blessing. A Grateful Heart Will See God's Blessing. This past week, uh, we celebrated Harvest Thanksgiving in the Castries Methodist Church and in Gosley Methodist Church. And I also know in the month of November, respectively, our two other congregations will continue in the spirit of thanksgiving as we acknowledge the work of God in our midst and as we recognize the mighty works of God that continues to sustain and continues to direct our lives. But being a grateful or having a grateful heart is important and too important to be ignored. For a grateful heart, there have been research done that grateful people also impacts not only the soul, but also the health of people. Those who are ungrateful and ungrateful are persons who have negative consequences that they encounter in life. But for today, we focus on how a grateful heart sees, recognizes, and experiences the blessing of God in one's life. And for today, has been read to us, uh, is the gospel according to Luke, uh, 
in which the story of the ten lepers uh, whom Jesus encountered on his way to Jerusalem. Profoundly, the gospel writer identifies the journey that was set before Jesus as he was going to Jerusalem. But uh, without doubt, beginning with Luke chapter 9 and ends in Luke chapter 19, in all that Jesus was doing, he was preparing his disciples for the way of life in which they are supposed to live their lives as people who belong to God, who belong to him, and who was followers of Jesus Christ. And comes this story, 10 lepers, who because of their skin, as, lep as they had leprosy, they stood at a distance, call out to Jesus, heal us Christ, give us healing. And Jesus gave them the instruction, go to the priest. And on their way, they were healed. But the story does not end there because the story in its purpose was not only to recognize Jesus' ability to heal the ten, but at heart of the story was the person who came back to give thanks to Jesus. Verse 15 and 16 captures this when the gospel narrative says, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. But one would see where the story is guiding us when Jesus now questions the person. Were not ten were made clean? Where are the nine? Has none of them returned to give praise to God? Yet this foreigner? Here is the point that the gospel writer in which this story is unique to the book of Luke in which Jesus was concerned not only the cleansing of the leprosy, of the lepers from their leprosy, but the grateful hearts in which all of the ten lepers were supposed to return to give thanks to God because only one of them received this blessing. Your faith has made you well. How many of us have missed these words of blessing from Jesus that we go on in life receiving many of God's mighty works yet never return to prostrate before the living God that ours is this word your faith has made you well. Today, brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite us to learn from the example of this Samaritan person who came back to Jesus in light of these three points which illustrate his grateful heart that he was able to see God's blessing, to experience God's blessing, to receive God's blessing that although nine were cleansed, nine received healing, only one was saved when he came back to Jesus. The first point that I invite us to have a grateful heart is to recognize what God is doing. Verse 15 reminds us, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed. Scripture does not identify the nine as recognizing their healing. It does not record 
although scripture has said that all of them were healed yet only one recognized that he was healed to have a grateful heart is to recognize what god is doing in our lives and in our communities and to appreciate it the the pivotal point in this narrative is when this one person recognized that he was healed how many of us have been experiencing god's work in their life how many of us has experienced healing how many of us has experienced god's provision yet we do not recognize we do not appreciate we go on and on and on we complain we complain and we complain yet we do not have this gratitude within us to recognize that god has done something one of the hymns uh, which would be the hymn of respond to this sermon is count your blessing and name them one by one and you would be surprised what god has done in the midst of whatever we are facing sometimes we are too blinded by our ungratefulness ingratitude that we do not recognize what god has done and is doing in our lives all of us experience god's doing one way or another i draw to us the story in jeremiah 29 One to seven, that was read to us. The people of Israel were taken into exile. They were in a place, yet they did not recognize the place as a place to prosper, to be successful. And they complained, and they want to still go back to Jerusalem. Yet they did not recognize and appreciate that God was also with them in exile. And Jeremiah wrote to them, plant, take wives, live your lives. Your welfare is in the welfare of where you are. Pray, appreciate, be grateful of what is being afforded to you. There will come a time when God will indeed return you to your land. But for now, appreciate be grateful give thanks to what you have not what you don't have give thanks to what you have recognize what god has begun to do in your life that is the beginning of appreciating on being grateful what is the difference of the 9 to the 1 verse 15 reminds us then one of them when he saw that he was healed all of them was healed yet one saw that he was healed how many of us in our lives that we may be experiencing and we are experiencing god's mercy each and every one of us but you could be that one who see that you are healed who see that god is at work in your life and there are so many who are with us who god has done so much in their lives yet they are still blinded by their ignorance of the fact that god is at work and continue to be at work in our lives the first step brothers and sisters to a grateful heart is to recognize that we are healed to recognize uh, and be appreciative of the fact that God is doing something God has already done something to you and to me a second point that i draw to us uh, is uh, he did not only saw and recognize that he was healed he turned back and uh, the meaning of turning back he retracted uh, his steps back to the one who healed him 
And this journey was a journey of faith because they stood from afar. They saw Jesus from afar. Yet he turned back to seek the one who said, go to the priest and show yourself and you would be healed. Here is the journey of a grateful heart. Not only recognizing what God has done, but begin to retract, begin to have a new direction back to Jesus, who is the source of all healing, who is the source of all life. It is important for us here and now in the world that we live in, the blessings that God affords us uh, begins with us recognizing what God has done. And at the same time, we turn back. It's 180 degrees turning from the direction that we are going to turn to where God wants us to be. And God wants us to be at the feet of Christ, uh, worshiping, acknowledging, submitting in humility to Jesus Christ, who in him is our life, who in him is our prosperity, who in him is our welfare, who in him is our blessings. And this is important for us as God's people. As a nation, we must retract our steps back to Jesus Christ. As a Christian, we must retract our, our steps back to Jesus Christ. And this journey is a journey of consolidating our faith. It's a journey of maturing our faith in Christ Jesus. Biblical scholars have identified the faith of the, all the ten. They stood from afar, they cried out. They began the initial faith in Jesus Christ. Yet another level of faith came when they were obedient to his instruction. They turned and went to the priest. But the one Samaritan, the one, there is another level of his faith when he recognized that he was healed. And there is another level of faith. He turned and went towards Jesus. At the beginning, there was a barrier between him and Jesus in as far as leprosy was concerned. But Luke identifies something also which should be a barrier between him and Christ. He was a Samaritan. Religiously, Politically, racially, there was a big barrier between him and Jesus as a Samaritan. But still, he broke through those barriers. Whatever it was, he turned back to go towards Jesus Christ. That is a higher act of faith of this Samaritan person. Brothers and sisters in Christ, a grateful heart is a heart that breaks down barriers when we turn at no barrier at all until we reach Jesus Christ. Last and final point today. A grateful heart is a heart that worships Christ. The Samaritan person did not only recognize that he was healed. He, don't, he did not only turn back towards Jesus. He sang aloud. He came humbly and prostrated and worshipped God. And thanked Jesus for what he has done. We have uh, people who complain a lot. We have people who grumble all, even in the small things of life. Worship is a far cry. Oh, churches 
are becoming empty because the language and the life of worship is far from possible to be lived out in church life and everyday life. But the story of the one Samaritan who came back reminds us of this journey of faith that he began with, crying out, obedience, recognizing the work of God, turning back, and worshiping, humbling himself at the feet of Jesus Christ. And there is no higher gratitude that you can ever offer to God than to worship the one whom all worship is due, and that uh, is Jesus Christ. We are called brothers and sisters in Christ. In whatever that we are facing, when we give thanks to God, we are giving him credit, we are worshiping him. We are saying it is not by our power, it's not by our might, it's not by our wisdom, we are calling the attention to Jesus, who is the source of our life, who is the one that makes life possible. We have now people with higher education, scientific explanations of things in life. We have advance in medical. So many things we are able to achieve that we worship things more than we worship God. God, who is the source of our life, has never changed. It is important that we humble ourselves continuously in the midst of all that we have, that we must portray, prostrate at the feet of Christ and worship him who is the source of all. Pride goes before destruction. Haughtiness precedes a fall. According to Proverbs 29, 23, in the New King James Version, it says, a man's heart will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. It is important for us, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, that we must have the gratitude, the heart of a gratitude heart that worships, that acknowledge the source of our lives in all. As we conclude this sermon today with the understanding that a grateful heart will see God's blessing, when we position our heart to be a grateful heart, we position our life for more blessings. And this is uh, the, at the heart of this story. Nine were healed, but only one was able to receive these words of blessing. Your faith has made you well. A total and wholesome blessing that is offered to those who have a grateful heart. If you thank God for what he has done for you, you prepare yourself for more from him. Gratitude to God makes you a candidate for more blessings from you. Not only the healing of a skin, not only of having material wealth, when you have a grateful heart, you can expect to receive more from God. No one wants to bless an ungrateful fellow. Jesus asked the question, where are the nine? Did I not heal ten people? What he was saying, there is a bigger problem that I heal ten and only one comes back. And they have missed this blessing that I am going to give only to you. Jeremiah 30 verse 19 to 20. It says, 
then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Their children also shall be as before and their congregation shall be established before me and I will, I will punish all who oppress them. Multiplication and increase follows thanksgiving. Multiplication and increase follows and flows from a grateful heart. Keep thanking God. Keep being grateful for the small things that you have. God shall keep increasing and promoting you. When Jesus gave thanks before the little meal available was shared, as we read in scripture, it multiplied. Instead of grumbling or complaining about the little you think you have, cultivate a positive attitude of giving thanks. God can supply what you have and ensure that it is not just enough, but you have access. His name is El Shaddai, the many-breasted God, the all-sufficient God, the God Almighty. It is my prayer as God's people, as a community of faith, that the St. Lucia Circuit will be the one who recognize what God is doing, who turn and go towards Jesus, who worship and prostrate at the feet of Jesus and worship God. And we are the one who will receive this word from Jesus. Your faith has made you well. Be blessed in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we meditate on God's word, we'll sing him 212. When upon life billows are tempers toss, count your blessing, name them one by one.
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings to see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings to see what God has done. At this time, I would like to just share with our children two stories that are of contrast to each other with the theme of our sermon being showing gratitude. There was once a friend who betrayed his friend. And when the friend who did so many things to him came and confronted him, why did you betray me? I did so many to you. I brought you out of the gutter. I provided you food, provided you shelter. I paid for your higher education. And I did so many in your life. And yet you betrayed me. And in response, his friend said to him, Yes, that is all true. But what you are doing now? He was more interested in what was done then than, what, than appreciating and being grateful for all that has been done towards him. The second story is uh, there was an immigrant family who had a, a shop. And uh, one of the son came to the father who was the shopkeeper and said, Dad, I see that we don't have much. I see that uh, I see the profit, there is not much that we are gaining, yet you continue in this work. And the father told him, I just want to say, share with you that every day I do this work in thanksgiving and grateful because I arrived in this land with only one pair of clothes. But now, you and all your brothers and sisters are in high education and have attained so much. We have a car, we have a house, we are able to survive each day. If you add all of that and subtract one pair of clothes, that is all the profit that we have gained in these past years. And he told the son, be grateful for what we have then seeing what we not yet have. Those two stories to you, our young, reminds us of a life of gratefulness, of gratitude, of giving thanks. Some of us want to have more, yet we do not recognize what we have already been blessed with, and we are ungrateful. But, some of us, like the second story, reminds us that even in the small, they are grateful for what they have because they have known for how far God has brought them, God has blessed them, and they continue to give thanks. To you, our children, sometimes we complain the small that we have, but sometimes we do not recognize the sacrifice that has been done and it is always important that we give thanks to God. We give thanks to those of our parents who struggle each day. And as our sermon today reminds us, when we give thanks, we position ourselves for more blessing from God. Oh, how the world would have been a better place if we just have people who are grateful in whatever we have that we can share and be joyful in our heart no matter what. It is my prayer that God will give you grateful hearts, be appreciative, be thankful, and give thanks in whatever situation you are, no matter what you are facing. Let us pray. God bless our children as they continue their education. Give them a grateful heart, grateful for small things, grateful for big things, grateful for whatever they receive, that as they are being grateful, 
that able to share, able to appreciate, and able to be joyful in whatever circumstances. Bless our children. Continue to bless them. We pray in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Continue in worship as we pray the prayer of intercession and the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty, everlasting, God our provider, Jehovah Jireh, God our comforter, we bring to you the cares and needs of our communities. We pray of your wisdom to equip and guide those in leadership. We pray that you will have mercy upon our leaders and guide them, O oh God, in all decision making that will affect the, num the numerous citizens at national level, in our different communities, in all levels of society, and all aspects of our lives, whether it's political, whether it's religious, whether it's communi communal, whether it is at our workplaces, and our, our leaders, and our community in wisdom that we may not only know good from bad but we will be empowered to choose good and to live our lives according to your will we pray of those who are in need physical spiritual mental relational we pray oh god that we'll be grateful with the things that we are blessed with. Recognize the work that you have done and continue to do. And be guided and be positioned in our lives uh, to be grateful in small and greater things that we may continue to experience your blessings in our lives. We pray of a greater need not only of physical fulfillment, but also of spiritual and wholeness in our lives. And we may be the recipients of the word of Jesus. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May wellness come to our community. May wellness come to our families. May wellness come to your people in St. Lucia. Those who are joining in, in this time, may we receive a wellness that comes to us in Jesus Christ. We pray of our youth and our children. We pray for our teachers who teach in our schools. We plead to you parents who are examples and role models uh, to our children and our youths. We pray, O oh God, of those who are unemployed. We pray of radical hospitality in, in our communities that we may make space for each other that begins with a grateful heart, that begins with appreciating our limitedness in life and, our, and the possibility of abundance when we share and care for one another. This is the prayer of intercession. May those who seek healing receive healing in the name of Jesus, whom through his stripes we are healed. Those who seek forgiveness receive the forgiving work. Your forgiveness through the forgiving work of Christ, the redemptive and atoning work of Jesus Christ. May their guilt be freed. May they experience the freedom of your Holy Spirit in their lives. Continue to increase. Continue to multiply. Continue to bless. As we come with grateful hearts, as we intercede, we pray in and through the name of Jesus who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank all as we are blessed through the hymns, the prayers and the word. It is my prayer that God continues to bless us and shower his blessing upon us. Now we sing the final hymn, 408, There is Showers of Blessing. the healing power of Jesus surprise you. The awareness of your unique gifts guide you. The presence of the Holy Spirit empower you. And the blessing of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit lead you to life abundant for you and those around you. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.